Just guess. Anyway. So... I think what I've learned uh, from everything I've done thus far is that Chess Ground is a library for just implementing basic, really basic model for chess. Um, the notion would be that you could have a thing, a template that represents a set of pieces, a board, an ability to generate moves, and so forth. However, it itself does not enforce chess rules, but it does identify possible destinations for pieces. Fine. And then I was looking through uh, the Lee Chess uh, source code, trying to understand what exactly, um, uh, what's it? There's the Lee Chess, uh, well, it imports Chess Ground, but it also implements this thing called like JSON View, which is the means by which, um, well, in fact, yeah, we have a JSON view for a study, for a game, for a round, for spectators, all these things. Basically, like, well, no, I, I misspoke there. There's one for a round JSON, which this is uh, when a game is actually in progress, we use this. There's a separate one for if you're doing a study. There's a separate one for if you're doing analysis. There's all these different perspectives and functions and such. Okay, so that's the Lee Chess modules side of things. Um, then I was digging around in the Lee Chess app folder and couldn't find anything that does the UI rendering because all the UI code is actually under Leela UI. Um, so you see right here it says now I'm perusing Leela UI round. Round being the um, uh, I don't even know what you call this. I guess controller. But we're actually in the UI, so this is more like a view controller or something. But it's an object that represents um, what happens during a game. And somewhere, somewhere in here is the thing that actually tries to render the damn pieces on the board. Because when you're looking at a chess game, you see pieces on a board. So, I saw that there was a directory called Crazy. I created a separate directory called Dark. Might not have been the brightest move ever. Maybe I should actually take a look at what's done for Atomic. Um, so this is how capturing is implemented for Atomic. Uh, but let me think more about this. So this manipulates the chess ground. I don't want to have to set pieces in chess ground based on what a person's going to see on the board. I want the UI to render uh, the pieces based on what the player should see based on Fog of War, but that shouldn't affect what chess ground's pieces are. Unless I want to make things really complicated for myself. And I don't think I want to do that on my first try. Um, I mean, it's great and all that this removes pieces from the board just so they explode and such. Oh, hang on. Wait, does chess ground have a thing called explode? I sure hope it does. Can I select the word explode? Can I... No, I cannot, so I have to drag and click it like this. Okay. Do we have this thing called Explode Inside Chess Ground? Leela Modules Chess. Um, include equals star net scale. So, we do have a concept of exploding here. Um, however, that's not an actual function in chess ground. So where the hell is this function defined? 
Um, well, not in chess ground, that's for sure. Uh, let's take a look here. Throttled explode. Oh, this is an animation sort of thing. But this is controlled at chess ground at explode. But there is no explode defined in chess ground. How do you call a function which doesn't exist? What is the sound of one hand clapping if a tree falls in the woods and nobody's around to hear it? Did it really happen? Um, export const explode equals throttled explode. I suppose this is what um, what's being invoked from where we say chess ground explode, that must be invoking sound.ts's explode. But no, no, the, the, that can't be the same thing. Yeah, this is not some extension of chess ground. So, um, Fine. Can we get a listing of the files that have the word explode in them? Um, recursive listing. So you got a whole bunch of Scala files, some compiled class files, some XML files. That shouldn't make a difference. Those are all generated files anyway. Yeah. So I am very confused. Um, because if I search for uh, explode in chess ground, it's not there. And yet, we're calling chess ground at explode. Um, which means that somewhere in this UI, we must be extending chess ground and adding this explode function to it. Um, or that when explosion happens, that something's silently failing in the background, but that seems unlikely. Um, okay, what happens if I do a case insensitive search? WR with I there. Um, I don't suppose that I'm actually going to find something this way, but it's worth a shot. Um, wow. I'm surprised to hear any vehicles moving at this hour. Um, yeah, but explode is not defined here. So, um, yeah, if I search from this directory, that's all we got. If I go up a directory, oh, here we are. Explode is defined in the distribution of chess ground. Um, Explosion 1 default. Okay, but that was not defined anywhere in chess ground itself. It was defined in this. What the hell? What is chess ground? It's a node module, but it's also. Um, it's also. No, it's not the same as the Lee chess module, is it? confused. So we've got node modules chess ground. It's got an API and it's got a source. Um, and this, this has explode defined in it. Um, so I want to do something else here that applies a fog of war. Um, you know, just because I can. But what this is telling me is that I can go over to GitHub uh, and search this for explode. Okay, so api.ts defines this. Now, oh, I didn't find this when I was doing the module search because 
Um, my module search was looking for Scala files. Um, now I'm curious why api.ts uh, this was edited about a month ago. I'm confused about how this chess ground relates to the Leela chess module because, well, I guess these are two very different things. Okay, so what's the Leela chess submodule then? Is it not chess ground? Um, like if I go to modules and then I go to chess here. Oh, this is Scala chess. Okay, that's my confusion. Scala chess is all the data modeling for the chess game. Um, chess ground is the UI stuff here. So now I gotta figure out how is it that chess ground integrates into this? Like I see that it's a node module, but if I start editing the node module, well, I guess I have to um, grab node. Uh, actually, find. I don't know. Let's actually get status. Get remote v. Oh, okay. So this. <laughs> I forgot I did this. Um, yeah, now let's push all the changes. Git push origin master. I'd forgotten that um, uh, I had done this sort of thing. So hopefully, um, what? Well, that doesn't make sense. get remote v oh this is again just the uh, leela um, but I want to go to chess ground did I check out chess ground at some point locate chess ground that's quite a bit um, grab home leela um, Grip starting with home, Leela. All right, and um, grab chest ground dollar. Okay, so if I did, um. At one point, I swore that I did check this out as a submodule, but apparently, um, oh wait, I have not yet changed directory. Um, I thought at one point I did extend this because I was trying to do flick chess, and it didn't quite work out. Um, this isn't chess ground either, at least in terms of, yeah, I'm still under node underscore modules. Um, okay. Do I have an extension of this somewhere? Hopefully not, but maybe I do. Um, yeah, no, I guess my extension of chess ground is not there anymore. I need to, it, well, eventually I will need to make a extension, um, or fork this or whatever you want to call that. Um, just to confirm before I get 
too deep into this. Yeah, I did not... My fork does not exist anymore. I guess. Um, so... What does this mean? Um, um, well, we found chess ground. That's good. Explode is defined here somewhere. Um, so I need to figure out which files are generated which are, and which ones are source files. Okay, probably SRC would be the source files. Um, so, Explode does all the explosion activation stuff. But somewhere in here we actually render the pieces on the board. Oh, this is... that gives me some other thoughts too. Um, well, I could always customize this for my own um, site or whatever, my own instance. Um, I had some things I wanted to improve with the 3D pieces, but... Um, Set pieces, select square, new piece, etc., etc. Um, what I would like to do. <laughs> read the chess crowd state right to at your own risk. Meaning, don't do that. Um, so, what happens when we toggle the orientation? We'd call redraw all. Does redraw all have a, any concept of um, CG redraw? Okay, so does this redraw thing have any concept of what variant's being played? Hey, I'm just trying to do some really complicated stuff that I have. I'm trying to do web development, and I don't understand. I've not. I don't have very much experience with web development. I'm trying to extend some really complicated libraries such that if you're playing a chess game you've got fog of war enabled um it's not going well <laughs> although i think i found the library that does the actual drawing although it seems to delegate to another library uh calls cg.redraw um Oh wait, no. Okay, so it calls redraw all, but redraw all is a function pointer that, by default, uses cg .redraw. Either way, I've got to find out where's this redraw function. Uh, and does it have visibility? I mean, surely it must have visibility to um, the state of the game so we can figure out which pieces to conceal and which ones to show or reveal um okay so uh types.ts seems to declare this redraw thing wait no it declares that redraw is uh <laughs> I'm not even sure how, uh, how this notation works. This is TypeScript. This reminds me of um, what I've seen in... Uh, what's it? I've seen this... It's not a Lambda. I've seen this... It's not a key. There's some sort of term in Java for uh, some kind of functor. Um, oh, they call this in Java a callable, I think, where you declare that if I have a set of data, execute a function. In this case, the function being, well, the parameter list is empty, and the function by default is the void function. Um, so, okay, bind document... But yeah, at some point in here, we must be defining which draw or render function to use to 
figure out how to draw the damn pieces. So... Oh, that's interesting. You must draw differently for 2D versus 3D. Um... But where does CG.redraw get assigned? See API types and documentations elsewhere. Fine. Oh, okay. So this is actually defining that CG.redraw is a type of function which is passed into start. Um, but it gets called over the all over the place here. Like there's so there's redraw all we saw, but all redraw all does is invokes this uh, redraw function. Let's declare it elsewhere. The princess is in another castle. Um, so grep redraw. Debounce redraw. Okay. Uh, sure, that maybe sounds interesting. I think bind. Okay, so I'm going to guess that that's probably not what I'm looking for. Debounce redraw probably disassociates the redraw with the page or something. Or maybe it executes the redraw. I don't know. I'm not sure what they mean by debounce. Um, I could look that up in a dictionary, but... Okay, let redrawing equals false. If we're redrawing, return. Redraw now. Okay, fine. Um... But... I still think all of this stuff... Oh, wait. What do we have here? Function redraw all. Let... Okay. That's interesting syntax already. Let previous unbind equals the dom and dom.unbind. Board wrap bounds elements redraw now. Render. Okay, so I'm trying to find... Render must be defined here somewhere. No, we're going to import render from render. Um, okay. Looks like we almost have the notion of how we're going to render a thing. Okay, ported from chess ground view. Okay, so... Oh, ported from... Lee Chess Mobile or Lee Chobel, uh, which has a view.js. Okay. Um, pieces, keys, etc., etc. Walk over the board, etc. So. Don't have a notion of variant here. Don't have a notion of atomic. If I could spell, that'd be great. Okay, so this this is just entirely a um, this is a generic layer for rendering stuff. Um, render piece dom. Okay, fine. So there's nothing. Oh wait, now there's this concept of exploding though. That's how I discovered this um, library in the first place, is that I was looking for where explosions were defined and such. So, um, if O, if an explosion is occurring, for I in O.keys, add square exploding as well as the stage of the explosion. So I guess all the pieces are simultaneously removed. Compute score classes. This is cool. Yeah, now this, if what I want to do is define on a square by square 
um, I don't know, scale? Um, is a square attacked? And if so, just let CSS do the rest of rendering what needs to be hidden and shown. Um, okay. Well, I'm glad it's in some way calming. Yeah, I think part of the reason that um, it is calming or such is because I've um, done a number of vocal exercises. I've been in choir, like, forever. So, um... I don't know, when you are familiar, familiar with how to speak and familiar with how to sing, um, you can articulate yourself well without um, making tons of, I don't know, distracting. Uh, I'm, I'm forgetting what you call it, but you learn a discipline of how to uh, speak more clearly and how to articulate um, uh, a more sonorous sound. I'm by no means a soloist, but in choir you learn to sing with other people and not sound bad. <laughs> so, I don't know. That's probably why it's a little sonorous. Um, okay. So if s.check and s.highlight.check, add square check. What I need to do here is add a notion of a... Well, I actually don't care. Um, now that I think more about it. So s.exploding is a state that we want to apply. I could... Oh, I can't say I've actually played that game. That sounds cool. But yeah, if I want to apply a state of attacked versus not attacked, um, I could look at what calls this compute square classes. Um, which currently is called for, oh, render for a state. Um, this is getting more complicated than I imagined. Wait, no, state is of type state. Alright, um, grep state. It's got to be defined here somewhere. Okay, it's an interface. Uh, this tells us everything we need to know. This is... I'm not sure... I'm not sure what implements a state, but I'm sure that if I define um, things into this interface that must be implemented, that... <laughs> well, we'll see how it goes. Um... But yeah, I can define exploding as apparently an... This is interesting. Oh, exploding is of type cg.exploding. What I'm trying to find here is, is there a notion of stuff that's already attacked? Because I think there's a notion of dests. Yes, movable destinations. So what I would like um, is to be able to classify that a square is a possible destination for the opponent. Um, I'm sorry, no, it's a possible destination for my own pieces, so I can highlight, uh, well, let's see, these show valid moves, but color that can move, 
free dust show dust. Um, but I think I want to do something more advanced than this. Anyway, because there's some way I can. Oh, nice, 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 nice. So, if show desks, fine. Um, I can actually cludge my thing in here based on that setting, and then come back and figure out the right way to do it. Um, if S is selected. Wait, wait, wait. So, selected is kind of weird. Add square, selected, selected. Oh, wait, could I? <laughs> um, I wonder. With CSS, could I do some really strange stuff? I think I can. So just as a proof of concept here, um, let's go over to Leeches. I had previously set up a user style. Manage this. Nope, that's okay. Edit this. Where's the edit button? Can I edit? There we go. Um, so yeah, I had, first of all, kind of hacked the blindfold mode. Um, it's just like doing play with the machine, taking the white pieces. Um, and then in my preferences, I had enabled blindfold mode. Um, I guess to demonstrate that, I could comment out my custom user style that I'd added here. And you'll see that all the pieces are gone now, because by default, when you have blindfold mon mode on, you're not supposed to be able to um, see the pieces. But I made a hack that shows the pieces in blindfold mode, just so I could get some opportunity to, I don't know. But I guess my point is... Um, now I want to separately, uh, show piece destinations, which is an unusual preference for an experienced player to set. Oh, does this not work on the 3D board? Let's try this on the 2D board. Apparently it doesn't work there either. I can give myself extra pieces though, this way, <laughs> no. Um, okay, so do I have to turn off blindfold mode to get that working? Let's just suppose that I do. Um, oops, whatever. Let's turn off blindfold mode. Refresh this. Okay, now I get uh, piece destinations. So what I'd like to be able to do um, is to make a piece disappear. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. You see this highlight here where it's got the little things on the corners. I want to make pieces opaque or not opaque based on uh, the destinations including that square. Um, wait, wait, wait. So, what I should find, if I look at the document here, uh, oh, you guys can't see this. I'm not capturing this correctly. Um, so here we got the Leech Us game, the board, it's a standard board. You might just have to trust me on this, but I'm able to iterate through these squares one by one. Yeah. So this has a class of um, move dest. So 
Oh wait, now this also has a class of last move, but it has a class of move dust. I'm not, it also has a class of OC, whatever OC means in this context, I'm not sure. Probably occupied. Oh, move dust OC being move dust occupied. So I want to copy the selector. And then um, go to my user style, which I thought I had up. Apparently I don't have it up anymore. Oh, there it is. Um, and say, uh, what's the selector? Sure, fine. In this case, set opacity to zero. Can I make pieces disappear? No, no, that's actually making the highlight disappear. Which is not what I'm wanting to do. I want to make the piece itself not visible. Um, <laughs> so, how do I do this? We just get, so thing for a blindfold piece is one thing. But this is dealing with the square. I wanted to How do I determine that a piece is on a square? I really don't think I do. I think chess ground treats these as two independent concepts. Um, which is too bad, really. Oh, okay. Wait. Um, square. Could I set not only the... Oh, wait, no, if I set the opacity to zero, that doesn't work. Um, if I set just color of the square to just black, that's not black. Uh, is this something that I can get to show up? That didn't work either. Um, I thought at one point I had some way to be able to highlight a square to make it look a different color. Uh, let's get rid of this. Let's just go iterate back and forth between these windows. Take a closer look at the DOM and see what's going on. Um, square class. Um, Can I see any, like, the attributes of this square, maybe? Um, well, first of all, if I highlight this... What am... Uh, that was weird. That was not intentional. Does this still look okay? Yes, it does. I'm just finding it difficult to use the Google Developer Console and look at the board at the same time. Um... Oh, here it is, this one. Uh, transform. Oh, okay, now we do have to do a translate to get the square to be in the right location on the board. Um... Oh, background. Okay, yeah, there we go. So I want to set background to black. Um, Yeah, that's the sort of effect that I'm looking for. 
Now, of course, I'd want this to be different. I'd want the fog of war to show um, not black squares, but I want the squares that you can't see to be darkened. Um, but progress, we'll take it. So this would mean what? This would mean that background itself should change. Um, but I don't think this also needs to be an occupied square. I just want to see all my destinations um, highlighted in this way. Um, so if I refresh, okay, so this keeps my user style. Um, square dot, not last move, move dust, but just move dust. There we go. So I want to basically invert that effect. Um, I don't think I need this important flag there. Um, okay, so now what? We just board. So we got square. Um, I don't necessarily need that to be blindfold, but um, so getting rid of important there is complicating my testing, so we'll put it back. I have too many tabs open. Okay. So that's useful. Um, uh, so apparently, yeah, we have a property called move hyphen dust. Now I need to correlate what's on that square to the piece that I need either highlighted or not highlighted. Which is a bit troubling, to be honest. Um, so this adds squares. And what I need to do... It's not just add squares, but I need to compute piece classes. Uh, which is my problem here. So we need a new function. Um, yeah, that's troubling. Square, fine, 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 but um, wait, here we have render piece DOM. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe, well, yeah, it's probably too late at that point. Render square DOM. Compute square node has got to be, or square classes has got to be called from somewhere. Um, pieces, keys, etc., etc. That's pretty convenient that, um, Squares aren't used for any other purpose, so um, <laughs> in case of blo bugs, blame a different developer. That's lovely. Um, okay, so what if square node? Uh, dot dot dot. 
not same squares as k, etc, etc. How does anybody keep up with this stuff? Man. So this renders the piece DOM. Where is it? Okay, so squares was computed once. And then after having computed it, what do you do? Um, if it's a square node EL, that's oh so if this is saying that if the squares classification is not changed don't bother re-rendering it I think and then you want to apply DOM changes to moved squares or append new squares okay fine whatever um, Walk over all pieces in current set, apply DOM changes to move pieces, or append new pieces. So, I think for dark chess, the challenge is a bit more difficult. Um, we need to be able to change the class of a piece. Um, somehow. It doesn't even have to be chess ground that does it, but um, yeah, no, something's got to um, update the class. Because, like, the piece is not contained inside the square. The piece is in no way related to the square that it stands on, which is just maddening. I mean, it makes sense from a performance perspective. Why would you impose that kind of structure if you don't need it? But, um... But there's no correlation between a piece and a square, so there's no way to know... Uh... Or to classify this easily. Something would have to pass into, um... On this here. I don't know a mask of what pieces to display. Flag is moved, unless it's a fading piece. Okay, so there's a concept of fading. Um, I guess being either being captured or being exploded. Um... Oh, nice. Remove a fading class if it still remains. So, there's a way to define fading pieces. Um, can I somehow abuse that for what I want to do with Dark Chess? Okay, so render except a state. Um, what I can't tell here is, is what's the type of state. I think these are all attributes um, of the object that's being returned by render. Um, so this defines current animation dot plan dot fadings. And what I need to define is a way of injecting into this which pieces ought to be displayed and which ones should have a classification that ensures they are hidden. Um Or rendered differently or something. So. OK. 
Okay, let's see how fading pieces are done. Um, so I see there's the animation uh, TypeScript, which defines fading pieces. Um, maybe I use this, maybe I just latch onto this for um, what I'm doing with dark chess. That seems messy, but okay. Uh, animation plan defines fadings. Um, Oh, previous pieces, as well as the current state. All right. So this takes a chess ground representation of the pieces that were in this position, plus the state that we're transitioning into. Um, this actually itself defines fading pieces. And then defines those fading pieces as the pieces that were missing um, but how did it define that? Oh. Alright, for each piece if it's in the current position, if it's in the previous position, if it's not the same piece, um, push the piece that used to be there. And then, okay, that's kind of cool. Um, and what I needed here is a way to cludge into that um, if we were playing a special variant not only for promotions and stuff are we going to have pieces fade, but just in general, pieces always fade. Um, so, I don't know, that might work. That's so kludgy. Um, yeah, I think having done substantial research into how this application is built, I'm concluding that a lot of stuff would have to change <laughs> to be able to um, conditionally show or hide pieces. Like, figuring out the squares that are under attack is not so hard, but there's no way to translate between attacked squares versus pieces that I want to display. And it was far easier to disable the blindfold mode outright than it is to... Even blindfold mode is kind of a clutch. Like... I don't know. In blindfold mode, it's strange that you're able to, that your opponent's pieces are in any way rendered. I mean, it's convenient, but they're rendered, but rendered invisibly. But if you look at the DOM, if you look at the HTML document, the pieces are all there. Um, anyway, so... Yeah, we're learning stuff, but most of what I'm learning is that changing uh, this all to allow for a new variant where you only see the pieces that you're attacking, making that kind of change is pretty drastic. Um, I'm not sure that I could manage to do that in any feasible amount of time, because there's no way to... Uh, to tag the pieces um, 
Like, you can tag the squares, but tagging the pieces is a lot harder. I mean, one could clutch, I guess, making the squares appear on top of the pieces, but that won't work with the 3D board. And it probably wouldn't work with the mobile app either. So you need a better solution. Something that actually classifies what the pieces are supposed to be. Uh, and so on and so forth. So, Anyhow, um, I've been rambling here for far too long. Everybody needs to go to bed, and that includes me. So yeah, hope you enjoyed. Uh, I might progress more with this at some future time, I don't know. It's going to be tricky, because Dark Chess is a far cry from anything that Leeches currently does. Um, and it would involve concealing not just the pieces on the board, but also changing like the check rule so that there is no check. Unless you wanted to have a dark chest that had check, but that'd be kind of strange. Craigspiel would make sense, but in dark chest, no. You gotta live with the, um, with your king being potentially exposed. Um, so, yeah, I'd have to get rid of the check rule. Um, conceal the pieces on the board that are out of sight. And also... Um, oh, what's it? Uh, change the move list. I'd have to be able to put question marks into the move list um, based on not knowing what your opponent did. Although in some cases you might be able to figure it out. Um, yeah. So there's a lot to figure out there. And then you could potentially have retrograde analysis and the player wanting to fill in parts of the move list based on their understanding. And that, that's probably way over the top, but... Um, yeah, I think good progress is... Well, I can't even say progress is being made, but understanding is being had. And progress is probably just saying that, you know... Um, this whole thing needs to be revisited. The whole concept of being able to attack and conceal things um, could be done a lot better in general, so we could have this kind of highlighting. Not just of the piece that you're clicking, but um, just be able to show like what are all the attacked squares for either player, who's got a space advantage, and all these sorts of things would be useful analysis tools. So, um, you could uh, any advances that have to do with better tying squares to pieces and highlighting things are probably ge generally useful and not just specific to this variant. Anyhow, yeah, everybody go to bed, have fun, thanks for watching, see you next time.